Hi, William Tramp, also known as This FNGM here. Almost two years ago, I received a message from Daniel D. Fox, the creator of Zweihander, asking me if I wanted to meet up at a local game store, Tabletop Games and Hobby. Well, it turns out we were running in some of the same circles on Twitter, and we both live in the same town, Kansas City. We met up, we talked about Frisky Dingo and movies, our favorite games, and at the end of it, he asked me if I wanted to play some Zweihander with him. I remember being embarrassed to admit that I had never played before, and he, he laughed, and he told me it wasn't a big deal, and he and his friends would teach me, so I said, sure. I remember thinking to myself, number one, sounds neat. Two, Zoihander, that's basically Ravenloft Dungeon Dragons, but as a whole game. Whew. I remember heading over to Daniel's house where I met some really awesome people. Nick, Paige, Sarah, and Adam, and I was handed a mason as my character, and we started rolling. And I had a blast. Now, something to know about me. Traditionally, I'm a D20 system player. Pathfinder and Dungeons & Dragons were my bread and butter, and had been up until that point for over 20 years. So playing as Whitehander was an absolute culture shock for me at the time. Today, I'd like to take a bit to talk to you about my experience playing Zweihander as a primarily D&D player and some key differences between the two that have changed my perception on gaming. You know what? Before we get started here, I should probably give a disclaimer. World of Game Design, who owns Zweihander after purchasing the rights to the game from Daniel Fox in 2023, has paid me to make this video in support of the new Kickstarter for the Zweihander Reforged Edition. Link is in the thing. The joke's on them, though, because there is no way I wasn't going to talk at length about a project that I contributed to. That's right, I am now a professional writer. A wink. Okay, with that out of the way, some key differences between Dungeons & Dragons and Zweihander. First and foremost, we have to talk about tone. On one hand, we have Dungeons & Dragons heroic fantasy, and on the other, we have Zweihander's gritty survivalist fantasy. What does that even mean? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines- No, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. In heroic fantasy, you have characters of awesome power taking on threats such as demons and dragons while wielding magic swords and awesome spells. In these types of games, the emphasis is very much on the heroes and the amazing work that they do to make the world a better place. In contrast, gritty survivalist fantasies ask players to rely more on their cunning and desire for self-preservation because victory is unassured. In addition, consumable items and mundane equipment play a much larger role in the game as well, as there is no inexhaustible healing magic waiting to be wielded by whoever the group was able to convince to play a cleric this time around. In Zweihander, the game is less about what awesome power your character will get next level, and more about what changes will come to your character as they try to survive in an unforgiving world. The game has plenty of mechanics that reinforce these themes, such as peril and permanent conditions. So the second big difference I saw was the dice system. Now, obviously, using a different dice system was somewhat of a learning experience, as most of my 20 years of gaming centers around the D20 system. In Zweihander, the system is largely percentile-based. For the most part, most of your rolling will be done using a percentile dice and a D10, collectively called D100. What is most interesting to me about this system is that each skill test a survivor rolls is not made against a DC set by the game master, but rather a DC set by their own character's skill. Example, if I have a skill of 55 in athletics and I want to climb something that has a reasonable chance of failure, I would roll a d100 and attempt to roll a 55 or below. Now this isn't to say that the game master has no say in the difficulty of accomplishing a task. Each time a player attempts something that the game master determines a skill test is necessary for, the game master will assign a difficulty rating which imposes a modifier to the target roll somewhere from negative 30 to positive 30%. So using the example I gave before, say I have a skill of 55 in athletics and the game master determines that my lack of a rope makes the climb more difficult, she could say that my athletics attempt would be hard, which imposes a 20% penalty to my roll. So in this case, I would take my original 55, subtract 20, meaning I now had to roll a d100 and roll a 35 or below, which is much harder. Critical rolls function differently as well in this system, and that occurs when someone rolls doubles on their percentile and d10 dice, so 11, 22, 33, as well as a 1 or 100. Now, whether something is a critical success or failure is determined in the normal way. So if I succeeded on my athletics and my roll was double digits, that's a critical success. If I missed my target number and I rolled doubles, that's a critical failure. 
Okay, let's move back to that gritty survivalist tone of Zweihander, and let's talk about permanent conditions for your character. Now, before I ever played Zweihander, I assumed it was an incredibly deadly tabletop RPG. I'd played D&D 5e for years, and I was hyper aware of how hard it was for a character to die. So my base assumption is a game that was marketed as grim and perilous was a game in which player characters died by the score. Now, it turns out, and I'm going to share with you a little deep, dark secret about Zweihander, death is actually very hard to achieve. See, rather than the fear of death, the game instead imposes permanent and random conditions on your survivor when they max out their damage condition track, which not only can bestow a new flaw on your character, but also often a new facet of roleplay. The philosophy behind this is, according to Daniel Fox, death is the most boring status condition. Honestly, I can't help but agree with that sentiment. It is. Okay, here's an example. Recently, my character Shades, a spellcaster, went down. Now he's afflicted with combat anxiety and starts to deal less damage the more foes are involved in a combat. Now I want to talk about a massive difference between D&D and Zweihander, damage and peril thresholds. In Dungeons and Dragons, attacking and damaging has worked basically the same way for over 20 years. You make an attack against a foe's armor class. If you're successful, you roll for damage. Maybe the foe has damage reduction or resistances of some sort, which modifies the amount of damage taken. And once this is all calculated, you lower their hit points appropriately. Zweihander works completely differently in this regard. So rather than having a set pool of hit points, you have a damage condition track ranging from alive to some variation of wounded to dying. This makes explaining to your party how your survivor is doing much more intuitive. So rather than stating on a scale of 1 to 47, I'm at a 31, you instead call out where you are on the track. I'm moderately wounded. Now to knock a character down the track, you have to make a combat skill test in the same way I mentioned before against your own target number, and then you roll damage. The key difference here is the damage thresholds. Each character has a table for their damage thresholds. The table is filled with set numbers stating how much damage needs to be done to a character to move them down the damage condition track. For example, my character may have a damage thresholds of, uh, say, 5, 10, 15, and 20. If someone attacks my character and they do 6 damage, this overcomes one threshold, but not two. As a result, my character would move one step down the track and is now one step closer to death. On the other hand, if I take four damage, this does not overcome threshold. So even though I took a hit, it has absolutely no effect on my character. On the other, other hand, if I take 11 damage, that would overcome two of my thresholds, meaning I would move two steps down the track. Woof. The numbers in the damage threshold table are modified by a character's brawn bonus, which is the statistic representing physical hardiness, and whatever armor they may be wearing. The more protective the armor, the higher the threshold bonus. That's right, in Zweihander, armor reduces the impact that damage has on your character. Oh! Yeah, hold on, hold on, that's not on brand at all. <laughs> What I think is particularly special about Zweihander is that there is a similar table for the Peril condition track. Peril is Zweihander's mechanic to express a survivor's uh, mental and physical fatigue, like a second hit point track. Peril encompasses all that can happen to a hero that isn't directly deadly, but makes an impact on a character throughout the course of the adventure. Exhaustion, heart-stopping fear, a slow descent into madness, Peril covers it all. Now, having this second track is absolutely key to Zweihander's success in the horror portion of the horror fantasy genre. The ability to take or have to resist mental damage gives a whole new facet to the game, one that Dungeons & Dragons has tried to replicate through a variety of conditions and special alternative rules over the years, but has ultimately, in my opinion, fallen short. Peril is the key to a grim and perilous game. See what I did there? Perilous. All right. In conclusion, I think Dungeons & Dragons does high-powered fantasy, heroic fantasy really well. But when it comes to other genres, I realize it's lacking a few things. Though you can approximate gritty survival horror using the D&D rule set, I believe that when a game lacks the mechanics to reinforce a desired playstyle, there's something lost in the translation of game engine to story. Zweihander's mechanics are designed in such a way to evoke the tone it aims for. Dread when accumulating peril, fear when faced with the possibility of permanent change, and the double-edged sword of damage thresholds, allowing both you and your foes to shrug off what should have been a successful blow. 
As a result of all of this, Zweihander is absolutely my go-to choice now for games in which I want the play to be rooted in grim and perilous circumstances. For those of you who are looking to make a full shift to a tabletop RPG that reinforces gritty survivalist play, you should check out the Kickstarter for Zweihander Reforced Edition, a project that I not only absolutely believe is worth your time, but one that I've contributed to myself as well. I've made a video uh, detailing what the Kickstarter encompasses. You can see that right up here as well. And I've also uh, included a link to the Kickstarter in the thing below. Either way, thank you for taking the time to listen to my experience with these two games, and I look forward to seeing you next time.